hello everyone. Uh, I'm Batuan from Mobilictum. Today uh, we have a guest uh, from Edmix, CEO and the founder of uh, InPlay Ads company, Edmix, Samuel Huber. Samuel, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you. Uh, well, can you tell us about your company and yourself a little bit? Then I'll go to my questions. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I used to be a mobile game developer running a small studio making hyper casual games a few years ago and uh, um, going through the process of monetizing our user base. I just realized how broken the, the, the model was monetizing with rewarded uh, video interstitial videos. It just felt that this was, um, you know, creating an experience that our users did not like. And so I wanted to create a better advertising experience for mobile games. Um, experimented with a few ideas and eventually came to what ad, what makes Admix special today, which is what we call the in-play. And the idea is to insert brands within the game itself instead of having those ads that interrupt the experience and therefore create churn and um, loss in, in retention. Now what we have is the ability to play games and consume the adverse at the same time. So of course, doing that is uh, something that, you know, it requires technology. Uh, you can't simply just put an ad tag and render it inside the game itself. So we've built basically the whole infrastructure from our SDK to our developer platform, our uh, ad serving technology to power um, ad rendering inside 3D walls. And so the vision of the company is really to build the infrastructure powering um, the media of gaming and enabling brands to reach uh, players while they are playing the games. Nice. Uh, you have a VR platform as well, like uh, it's a news website, right? Yeah, so the, the, com the technology works across every technology, you know, VR, AR, um, simple mobile, ga mobile games, eventually console and, and PC. We very much focus on mobile at the moment, but we have different ways to engage the community, including uh, various news platforms. Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, you're connecting real brands like mcdonald's let's go with the big bigger one so it won't be a like small promotion like mcdonald's uber i don't yeah. know Burger King, whatever in, in the games right yeah uh, how do you convince brands uh, who never knew anything about gaming or they are not like they are skeptical skeptical about uh, advertising in a game yeah i mean it's um it used to be very difficult, you know, when we started 2018, we were certainly ahead of our time. Um, as you said, brands were skeptical. Gaming was seen as a niche, even if it was big already, it was seen as, you know, one type of audience and not a, a mainstream platform. But this is evolving really quickly. Uh, we're seeing, you know, 2020 with COVID really acted as, a, as, a, as an accelerant for the whole industry, right? And then we have big platforms like Fortnite or League of Legends that are becoming part of the culture more than games. And we have, you know, adults that are now seeing their kids playing games and are also getting in the game. So everything is, is really moving forward. And because of that, the brands, the agencies are looking at gaming as a new channel to reach their audience. Um, it's not too big to ignore. You know, there's 2 billion people playing games. And uh, the time that they spend playing games is the same time as that is spent on social media. So in terms of attention and eyeballs, it's an incredible amount of time. And so brands and agencies now just can't ignore gaming. And so the question has moved from why games uh, to now how do I target gaming? So we've seen a shift in the question that the brands and agencies are asking. And of course, Admix has been built to answer exactly that, that need to do it at scale in a way that is measurable, that is trackable, it's totally programmatic. So all the controls that brands are used to, they can um, have the same amount of controls, except that for now they, they can reach their users while they play games, in addition from the web and, and social. Yeah, because uh, I mean, there's a massive amount of advertising budget from big companies and they just, you know, they probably some of, I mean, some of them are still spending a huge budget on the TV while yeah. there's a, a really big uh, chance on uh, waiting on the gaming industry, right? All right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a known ecosystem, um, a legacy spending. So that is not going away, but slowly you can see that TV is not growing. It's still passive, but it's not growing as big. And so you have new areas that are now growing. 
and the customer behavior is changing. People are spending more and more games. Games are more accessible. A lot of games are free. And so that creates just more eyeballs coming towards the gaming market. And what big agencies and brands are doing is thinking, where is my audience? Where are the eyeballs? And now, as I said, gaming is now too big to ignore. And uh, it's just a great time for companies like ours to start, you know, start providing the right technology for these brands. All right, great. Uh, this one will be a technical question. How do you control which ads to show in uh, which game? For example, let's say I'm playing a first person shooter zombie game mm -hmm. and there is like a banner with Uber Eats, like eat now. Uh, like, is there any contextual targeting in the game, like relevant brands with relevant games, something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's the whole idea. And this is where the technology really comes into play. Um, putting ads inside a game, you know, you, you can do that as an agency, uh, but really when it, the technology becomes interesting and, and provides a lot of value, it's this contextual matching that you said. So the way that it works, um, of course, we use data to um, serve the most relevant ad to the most relevant player in the most relevant game. And we basically have a double filtering system. So on one side, the game publisher can whitelist or blacklist categories of ads that they want to allow in their game. If they don't like specific brands, they can remove it. And then on the other side, the advertiser can also select the type of game. Uh, they can select the, the bundle of the game if the game is known or categories. So they can, for example, filter out violent games, things like that. And then we even have another way to measure performance of these adverts, which is around viewability and how long the ad has been seen. And uh, the buyers can also segment and only target highly viewable adverts, which is most of them. But they have different ways basically to select um, quality of the inventory effectively and also categories to make sure that we don't end up with an ad that you know, is just um, very non-contextual and, and, and looks weird. Okay, so both parties can control where they would like to be seen or what they would like to show, right? Yeah, both parties can control that. And then, of course, then we use, you know, data uh, to actually match ads that are most relevant to that to that user. OK, small question. Your inventory is bigger on PC or mobile or VR? We, we focus on mobile, so it's uh, it's 98 percent mobile at the moment. Um, really big focus on mobile for various reasons, mainly the fact that advertisers are just more used to the mobile ecosystem. We have access to a lot more, you know, data points. Uh, geolocation, IDFA, stuff that they are requiring to, in order to be able to activate those campaigns. So the technology works everywhere, but we decided to focus on mobile very heavily for now. Okay, you, you mentioned IDFA, uh, maybe we can uh, talk about that also, because uh, I mean, it might be interesting to show, you know, like uh, you'll bypass this, uh, this issue with, with your ads. Yeah. Uh, a question regarding the player perspective, how do you know that the players uh, actually like what they see. For example, there's the statistics that the players actually like to see uh, rewarded ads, or they want to use it because you know they are getting something extra. But uh, I'm playing games to escape from reality, and then I go play some RPG game, or I don't know, driving a car. Then I see something from the real world. How do you measure, like, if if uh, if if the ads are bothering the players or not? Yeah, I mean, we we run a lot of um, you know studies, focus groups, basically to figure that out. This is how we came up with the the format that we currently use. Um, mainly, we are giving the publisher complete control over the way that they want to place ads. So it's the the publisher of the game that decides how many ads they want to put in the, in the environment, how big the ads are, the type of brands that they allow. So by giving them tools and not just a plug and play solution, they get the creative freedom and also the contextual choice in, to be able to decide and control their experience. So we put the responsibility in their hands because it's their content and they're very you know, protective of the content. So uh, by doing that, we kind of avoid um, abuse and you know having thousands of ads in a game, for example, the publisher would not do that to their own game because no one would play it, right? So by giving them the responsibility to do that, we end up with great experiences that they have very carefully crafted. They're generally quite cautious about the number of ads that they're placing. 
So it always ends up maximizing the user experience. Um, and it's something that they measure as well, right? But you know, we've seen examples of studios that are um, using both intrusive uh, ads like rewarded or interstitial and they complement that with in-play. It's totally complementary. One doesn't take over for each other, from the other because it's monetizing different moments of the game. Um, or we've seen some publishers that were starting to space out the interruptions and making the same amount of money with in-play, but with no effect on the retention. And oh. that for me, it's really a start, a start of a, a shift in the um, way that people think about monetizing their games. Because now they're starting to start, you know, think about in-play as part of the creative process. And therefore you don't actually need to create levels that stop to be able to be interrupted and so on. So it creates this interesting mind shift. And uh, of course, it's just the beginning, but I think we're going to see a lot of um, exciting implementation with in-play in mind um, instead of, you know, the traditional implementation that favor interstitial and rewarded videos. Actually, when I was checking your website, I was like, maybe I should create a racing game and put a couple of uh, you know banners as an ad it definitely uh, yeah. i mean it, it, it's something syncing with the game design so you, i mean yeah. all the ads are like that but uh, i think this one is specifically that uh, i want to show the ad here so like the level design will uh, will be according to that so it definitely boosts the creative creativity i think uh on your website you have a manifesto that says like uh, ad tech is not going anywhere. True, I agree, but uh, there's also a rise of subscription services where, you know, even YouTube is uh, pushing a lot to, uh, mm -hmm. for everyone to subscribe. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about this? Like if, if uh, there will be a shift on subscriptions where ads will be less important and in, if that will be the case, what do you think about uh, your your brand? Yeah, um, I agree that subscriptions are on the rise, um, but you know, gaming is growing fast. That everything is growing. So yes, there will be more subscription. It doesn't mean there will be less advertising. The way that I see it, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the data. Um, it's not just my opinion. Is the gaming is growing as a whole, but the part of gaming that is growing even faster is the free to play. Right? Because gaming is more and more accessible, there's more and more people using mobile, therefore they download more and more games. And um, you know, it's what happened when an industry really matures. You move from early adopters to the late majority, and the late majority generally is less willing to spend money on things because although they're enjoying it, they're not as you know, hardcore fans as other gamers. And so as we keep moving, and most of the planet will eventually start playing games one way or another, um, for every new paying user that is spending money on in-app purchase or buying a subscription, there will be about 50 free-to-play users, right? That's just the mechanics of how things work. Even the most uh, successful game studios, I think Supercell has like over 10% conversion rates or something like that. Don't quote me on that. That's huge. The average is around 2.5%. So for every 100 users, you have you know, at least 95 who do not um, spend any money. So advertising is going to be more and more important because of that, because the audience is growing, the casual audience is growing, hyper casual is one of the fastest growing segments. So, you know, that's what we're seeing. And so um, even though subscription is also going to grow, the free to play need is not going to go away. And if we start presenting a business model that enables people to monetize the free to play users, and don't affect the user experience, don't affect the retention of the game, then suddenly even the big studios will be able to embrace advertising as well because there will be literally very little downside. Um, so this is what we're, we're thinking and uh, how we're approaching the, that problem. Okay, you mentioned that you started with hyper casual and then uh, shifted totally to ad tech. Right now, how do you see the in-play ads performing on hyper casual? Yeah, we've run a survey recently with um, I, I, over 80 publishers, some of us, some of them already using AdMix, some of them not, just to see which genre of games they were, um, you know, planning to use in play in. And so hyper casual was the number one genre. Um, and then you had like racing and sports and just just casual 
but um, hyper casual is is you know this is where the traction is right now. We have uh, studios who are very very aware of how to monetize with advertising. They're trying to maximize the number of impressions per session. You know, try to get the, that user profitable as soon as possible. Um, and so you can use interstitial videos, rewarded videos, but also in play on top of that to just try to increase your opt effectively and get, get higher value per user. So we found a really great product market fit there. And uh, we now have some pretty large uh, hyper casual studios currently integrating our solution. Okay, nice. The company is growing. That, that's a good, good Certainly, yeah. Yeah, oh. it really is. There's been a, a big shift mainly um, on the on the advertiser side where now you know gaming is right there at the top of things that brands are interested in and as i said before it's not why gaming it's how do i access gaming how do i make it scalable how do i have control over the type of games that i'm into how do i measure performance success what is the infrastructure i can use and this is exactly what we provide we're moving from a world where we had uh, this manual you know integrations into games that are great for PR, but not really great for business. It's not profitable, it's not measurable. And now we're bringing an infrastructure that makes it really, really simple for brands to buy gaming traffic effectively, just like they can you know, um, reach their audience on the web, they can reach their audience on social. Gaming is really the last big frontier. And that's what um, InPlay enables these brands to do. Nice. Uh, dear followers, uh, mobile game developers, if you're interested to test a new revenue stream and new monetization technique, definitely check out Ed Edmix's website. We are going to add it in the co comments, uh, especially if you're a hyper casual studio. You listen mm -hmm. to Samuel. Samuel, thank you so much. Thank you so much for Welcome. joining. Welcome. Great to chat. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.